Hello everybody, my name is Eric and this is the YouTube channel Gun Gamers and today I'm going to be talking about and taking a look at a unique airsoft replica that should be very appealing to some of you SIG fanboys out there and that is going to be the SIG, get ready for a mouthful, Proforce MCX Virtus. So the SIG Proforce MCX Virtus is an Airsoft AEG replica made by VFC and it is a replica of obviously the real SIG Sauer MCX. This is a SIG licensed product and this one is not in factory configuration. As these come, they come with an M-Lock handguard and I decided that I was going to make this look a little bit more like something that is called an LVAW, a low visibility assault weapon I believe is what that stands for. And it is a unique variant of the SIG MCX that is chambered in 300 blackout and is used in some numbers by members of United States Special Forces. Uh, it's a really cool platform, it's really neat, so I basically bought this explicitly to make it a, I wouldn't call clone correct variant of that, but it is very much inspired. Now with the MCX, my use of it has been over the last year or so that I've owned it. Uh, I bought this in the beginning of, I believe, 2022, and then I used it throughout 2022 and 2023. Now here we are in 2024, and I'm finally talking about it because I've got some good time under my belt using this gun at a variety of games. I've run it at Desert Fox events out in California. I've run it at an American Milsim local event. Uh, I actually loaned this to somebody at a Milsim West event because their primary went down, and it has survived all those conditions with some caveats. So the first game that I used this at was an AMS local game called Eastern Front, and I had it there in a configuration that I had rewired to Dean's, and I otherwise was a bone stock gun. Now, when I ran it there at that first game, I was spamming semi-auto because riflemen are semi-auto at many of these games, and when I was spamming semi-auto, uh, it wound up totally melting the Dean's connector because the motor and the whole system was drawing so much current and so much heat that it totally bricked the gun after melting that Dean's connector. I got home, I replaced the Dean's connector, I you know, rechecked the whole system, and I swapped the motor, and ever since then I have not had that problem recur, which does tell me that the factory motor was the reason that that happened. It also could have been my solder job but considering my new solder job has not had the same problem with the new motor, I'm pretty inclined to believe it was the motor. We also tested with another example of the MCX we had on site, and uh, Garrett, another member of the Gun Gamers team, was also able to recreate the issue of having the whole system heat up a ton on semi-auto spam. So my recommendation for an immediate thing to do when you get this gun is probably swap out the motor, unless, of course, there are some major updates to this gun in between the time that I bought it and the time that you're buying it. But personally, I recommend a new motor. And while we're on the subject of batteries and heat and all that stuff, let's talk about battery space. Battery space is another one of the big cons of this gun. You're really gonna be hard pressed to get more than in 11.1, 1, 1100 milliamp in here. I actually took the gas block out of my example here because it really serves no function. You don't really see it through the entire handguard that I've got and it just opens up the battery space that much more. I can actually put a 7.4 volt Titan lithium ion battery in this handguard space now. It's tight and it kind of scrapes against the handguard, but it's possible. And when I run this indoors, I actually want that 7.4 because the gun overspins with an 11.1, so another consideration. So those are the two biggest cons of this gun right out of the way, just in terms of the actual way that it is constructed as it comes to you. A couple of other issues that I've had that are issues I haven't really seen other people bring up or have problems with. Uh, one, my bolt catch fell out as soon as I fielded this thing. Uh, literally the first time I used it, the bolt catch just disappeared and I have never found it since. Unfortunately, there are no OEM replacements available. It looks like it might be compatible with a standard M4 bolt catch like cover, but the actual bolt catch mechanism that allows you to bring the bolt back 
keep it open for adjusting your hop up and then close it, the closing portion does not work. So what I actually have to do is just smack the side of the receiver as if there was a bolt catch and then just that shock sends the dust cover home so that I no longer have an open and exposed hop-up assembly. Uh, in addition to that, I had to JB weld the ambidextrous magazine release to the point that it doesn't work. And the reason I've done that to fix it and make it where I no longer have an ambidextrous mag release is for whatever reason, every single time I used this gun in the field, I was completely unable to retain magazines. Anytime this ambidextrous magazine release would hit any gear that was on my chest, anytime it would even get bumped, I was ditching magazines. And there's definitely at least one or two magazines at my local field that I just have never been able to find again because I was playing a night game with the MCX and I had no idea I'd even lost a magazine because it can happen so easily. So I JB welded the ambidextrous magazine release. I always use my trigger finger for the magazine release. I'm rarely reloading offhand enough that I really want an ambi mag release. And if I am reloading with my offhand, I can just use my thumb. I would rather do that. This side's mag release is much sturdier and seems to not be tripped so easily. It's just, I don't know what the deal was. Now those are all the problems that I've had with this gun and I like to front load this video with those problems to still talk about the fact that I really do like this gun, but not necessarily because it's the best made airsoft gun I've ever used. I like this gun because I think the Elva platform is really, really cool and I really, really wanted one. So I bought the gun to build that platform. And now that I've got it in this configuration with the Airsoft Artisan front kit, and an Airsoft Artisan folding stock. I have a T1 style red dot. Uh, I actually will run my D-ball up here where it will stay on the upper receiver rail and maintain zero as opposed to anywhere on the handguard because that is a little bit wiggly the way that it's mounted. Generally speaking, if you have anything you want to hold zero on an MCX, you're best off putting it on that monolithic top rail that only runs to about here, but that still gives you space in my case for rear sight, red dot, D-ball, front sight. Not bad, all things considered. And with that configuration, it's really neat. It's really fun to play with. And you could also put a battery box up here if you wanna wire this thing externally and have an easier battery swap because you do have to take the handguard off every time you wanna swap batteries. And that is a little bit of a pain. I get that there's not a lot of space to put a battery on an MCX, but you accept that because you want an MCX. And I think the solution of putting it in the handguard near where the gas tube and gas block would be on the real one is the best solution overall. The next best solution is gonna be putting a PEC style battery box right here so that then you can also wire it to the outside, unplug it, plug it back in, do all the stuff you wanna do and not have to open up the handguard every single time you wanna swap batteries. Uh, that is probably more practical, but it really only works if you wanna accept no ability to run an IR device on this replica. But despite all those problems, the gun is really cool. I really like having an MCX style gun because I like having an airsoft gun that I think looks cool and matches certain kits and matches certain styles and aesthetics. And in terms of handling and shooting experience, once I swapped out the motor, the stock gearbox has been doing great. The stock hop up is definitely usable up to I would say 0.3 gram BBs. Once you get up to three twos, you start losing a good bit of energy because of impedance. Uh, something like a maple leaf hop up bucking is probably gonna be my next upgrade to this gun so that I can run heavier BBs at games that supply them or games that allow that. But if you're going to games or you're a player who mostly uses, you know, two eight gram BBs or less, the stock hop up is just fine. The stock barrel is decent. It's certainly not the most accurate replica out of the box, but most things aren't. You wanna put those upgrade parts in if you really want precision, but in terms of shooting performance for a stock AEG, I've been very happy with this. One of my favorite features about this gun, actually from a user friendliness standpoint, is the fact that once you take the stock off, you have immediate access to a QD spring guide. The rail system that is molded into the rear of the receiver 
also houses the rear of the spring guide. So you can press that in, rotate it a quarter turn, pull it out, and change your spring on the fly without doing any sort of disassembly to this gun. So my use case for that is that I go to a variety of games with a variety of energy limits. If I'm going outdoors and I'm allowed to run up to 1.5 joules for a rifleman, I will put in an M110 or M120 spring, I forget which, I don't have it labeled anymore, uh, and that will get me up to 1.5 joules. If I've got a CQB game that I'm going to with the new local airsoft field that's opened up, Bad Cat here in Webster, uh, I am able to put in a one joule spring, put in a 7.4 so that the whole thing times and cycles correctly, and I can immediately go and play indoor. So outdoor, 11.1, 110 or 120 spring, good to go. Indoor, 7.4, I think M90 spring is what I'm using, good to go. So it's been a really great convenient platform in that way, and I don't have that with any other platforms. The Sima Platinums and other options on the market exist and you're able to do conversions that don't require you to take the whole thing apart on M4s now too, but guess what those M4s aren't? They're not an MCX, or in my case, an LVAW. Magazine compatibility is pretty standard VFC magazine compatibility. I have been running this with PTS EPMs. Uh, VFCs, factory magazines also work. Uh, Elite Force mid caps have been run successfully in this. I don't think it's particularly picky with magazines, or at least any more than most VFCs. It feeds great. I haven't had any problems in that department. The one exception I would note with that is the EPM-1. The EPM-1 magazine and some of those other ones that have a really, really high spring tension will cause mid-cap syndrome with the way that this gun comes from the factory. And that was actually true with my VFC Sotmod Avalon as well. So you do need to trim your tappet plate spring and just reinforce that area to prevent mid-cap syndrome if you wanna run something with that tight of a spring as a magazine. But in terms of overall build quality, other than you know losing the uh, bolt catch and having to JB weld that control, I am very pleased with the overall quality of this replica. The finishing is excellent. The paint and the, uh, the overall like look has really held up well as I've been kind of beating the hell out of this gun in some ways. And I'm extremely pleased with the overall quality for it being an airsoft gun, uh, but it is expensive. I was asked at a local field recently, hey man, is that an MCX? He hadn't seen that before, so that was pretty cool. But he asked the next follow-up question, was it worth $450? If you compare this to a lot of other Airsoft AEGs that are available on the market for less than $450, this is not in any way actually better than those Airsoft AEGs. You can get a Sima AK that you're not gonna need to mess around with and it's not gonna melt connectors for $200. But a Sima AK isn't an MCX, isn't an LVAW. Yeah, this is really, really neat, actually. And I think it's a really fun gun to play with. I think it looks really cool. I think it handles well. I really like it, and it's awesome. And it does have a couple of cool quality of life features, like the ability to swap springs immediately and then be able to use it everywhere. So yeah, this is one expensive gun, especially the way I've got it put together, but I can use it everywhere after doing just those things that tweaked it to my needs. So. Is the SIG Pro Force MCX Virtus the best airsoft gun out there for the money? I don't think so. Is it the best SIG MCX you're going to find? Yes. If you want a SIG MCX and you want to build something SIG MCX based, I do think it's a good base, but it is going to be a little bit of a build. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the SIG MCX Pro Force Virtus. I think it's really cool. I have a lot of fun with it, but I also acknowledge that it was not amazing out of the box in some ways, and luckily I was able to fix it pretty easily, outlining you know what I did in this video. So hopefully if you're looking at this gun, if you're like me and you would rather just have a toy you think is cool than maybe necessarily the best toy for the money all the time, you know what, go ahead. I think it's really fun, I don't regret my purchase, and I have no plan of selling it.
So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you hated this video, go ahead and leave a dislike. If you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna tell me just how stupid this gun is and how stupid I am for paying the amount of money I paid for it, go ahead and put that in the comment section. So thank you again for watching this video from Gun Gamers. My name has been Eric, and I will catch you guys in the next video and maybe on the field at some of the various events that I go to, play at, or host at Gun Gamers Productions. So thank you again for watching. Peace.